All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. This is uh, the very first Skunk Cast podcast coming and hosted to you for this one with some members of Task Force Bravo. We have Durgan, our fantastic commander, and Viral, the amazing, the incredibly sexy. You have to hear this man sing. Viral Sun with us today. And we are highlighting and bringing out Rumline, the commander of Task Force Delta. Him and uh, Task Force Charlie were the first ones that engaged in some a new event that we've done internally, and we thought we'd grab him, give him a little chance to talk about himself. So, Rumline, welcome to the show. We're super happy to have you. And I'd just like, uh, you know, to tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey in Star Citizen. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Um, I'm fairly new to the game. Um, I just started at the end of last year at IE 2951. And I found out about the game. I was just browsing YouTube, and there was, you know, some video got uh, recommended to me. It was, uh, I think it was some like, I just bought the most expensive ship in Star Citizen or something like that. Mm-hmm. And there's some guy that he had a he did a cargo run in a Caterpillar. He bought the 890 jump, and then spent the next four hours trying to dock it at a station. And I don't know, just something, something about that video. I mean, it was kind of sad. Like this guy's really struggling here, but uh, <laughs> he, it it was just like this game is like wait first of all hold up this is a game this is incredible it's like you know the amount of detail the the things that you can do is just so you know i don't know it just struck me and so i started you know started playing like i said at the end of last year and you know just been hooked ever since that's pretty cool that's amazing so you're you're about what a year year and a half Dirk, and how long have you been in the game well, I finally, I've been watching it ever since its first Kickstarter, and I finally backed it in 2017 and started taking some periodic looks at it. And my initial experiences were not great. I, I kind of had a an idea that when you pay money for a game, you should be able to get into it and have some kind of positive experience. You know, bugs are, as is always a thing with MMOs to an extent, but I was not prepared for the kind and quantity of bugs that I found here. (laughs) So my initial experience was, you know, every six to eight months, kind of log in, try and do a combat mission, try and do a box mission, run into just catastrophic bugs, and then log out for another six or eight months. And it wasn't until this past summer that I finally sat down and started spending some time in it and working on, you know, learning to actually fly properly and learning the FPS side. And uh, basically... Uh, after following uh, some of Katie's videos, because I'd seen some of her content back in Elite Dangerous, I'd played that on the side. Um, oh, nice. Kind of between that and following the the mess that was the Odyssey launch, it kind of <laughs> it left me with a major no, it left me with a a major hole that uh, it wasn't being filled by Odyssey in the way that a bunch of us expected it to be. So that, that kind of drove me to come over here and take a look again. And it was right around the cusp of when they were starting to, I, I think it was maybe 312, 313. I finally started looking at it seriously. And uh, I, I was finally starting to find myself kind of blown away with what they had actually accomplished and how far they were actually making it as a game. And so shortly after that, I ended up you know finding my way into Skunk Works. And that, that absolutely sealed it. Where I was you know putting... A few, you know, a few hours a week into playing a little bit of Star Citizen casually, I was suddenly finding reason to actually be in there as a game full time and mm-hmm. really take it seriously. I, you, we are going to touch base on that one too because it's going to be a reoccurring theme here, right? That oh, yeah. aspect of coming in and connecting with some other people that are really amazing to play with is a great way to fuel your interest in Star Citizen. A lot of people have been talking about that too. But Viral, I'm interested now, because I actually don't think I've ever asked you either when you got involved in Star Citizen. So far, we're all relatively what I like to call like the newer generation of players, because I started in 2018, tail end of it. So it was when I actually got in. It was still like 3.8, 3.9 era. And I played pretty steady, but then took a break in 3.10 era because like mining and everything i mostly did mining and that type of stuff but some combat but i didn't have sticks then and you know i wasn't fully committed to the game uh, and then similar to durgan right my interest has really ramped up in the last like since 312 on 311 again got me back in really playing heavy. i've been playing heavy since then but viral i, I wasn't sure about you actually um ooh, it depends when wh- whether you mean when i got fiscally involved or when i actually <laughs> got really involved with the actual game um i mean technically i've been a backer since 2013 uh, i was a 
huge Wing Commander fan. Mm-hmm. The amount of hours I logged into Wing Commander Prophecy, which I got free with my oh, it's my first major graphics card. Um, might have been a oh, it wasn't a Voodoo Three. It was the one I got after that. Um, it, could have been, it was it was something around that sort of age. Um, yeah. So I've been backing for quite a long time. Played the game intermittently for probably the last five years, but it was very much I'd go in on my own, I'd do a few little bits and pieces, but I didn't really have anything to do. Um, and it was it was only back in November last year, I think, uh, that I finally got a computer that wasn't powered by a hamster running in a wheel. Um, <laughs> according to my graphics card manager, I have logged 945 hours since then. Uh, well but, done. Uh, well, there you go. It's 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 been very much the fact that I I joined an org and started playing with other people is why I've put the amount of hours in that I have. Uh, much like when I played World of Warcraft on my own and wasn't in a guild, I used to put an hour in here and there, but got bored very quickly. Um, but when you start playing with an org, especially an org like Skunkworks, where they have events and uh stuff organized that isn't necessarily handed to you on a plate uh you know it's self-created stuff because it is very much you know it is a sandbox and what we make of that sandbox is what sort of fuels uh that desire to play so you know since joining skunk works which again i think was off the back of one of katie's fantastic videos i'm sure anyone that's listening to this has probably watched at least one of them um so was good. why i applied to skunk works and yeah i haven't looked back since well this is a great part to obviously segue into the skunks very directly on that so one of the questions i wanted to ask you rumline too is you've heard about a little bit why we've joined aisles that came in through the funnel through katie's videos when because i'm a bit newer of a star citizen player uh some of the older crowd right, it's a little bit harder to play with them they they have their own groups and stuff. And I was looking for someone newish, right? So when the Elite Dangerous people came over, I was ecstatic. And they brought these content creators with them too. There's a couple of them that I follow as well. Um, and then, you know, I got motivated by the same thing I think everyone did is Katie's narrative that brings us all together. So Rumline, is that similar to you or what, you know, what motivated you to join the Skunks? And then kind of where do you see yourself going in that organization? Okay. Um, yeah, definitely the uh, narrative videos were really compelling. Uh, what actually sealed it for me was, um, I can't remember the name of the video or whatever, but it was, they, they were doing a patrol of Stanton in a Carrick. And mm-hmm. it just struck me like everybody in there was so uh, mature, supportive, organized, structured. I was like, man, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Because, um, you know, I tried some other orgs and you know, it was, it was fun, but, you know, it was very kind of, you know, more ad hoc. You know, there, were, there weren't really a lot of, you know, people just did whatever they wanted kind of thing. It, there wasn't a structure so much. And, no narrative you know, know that, to bind them together, right? Right, yeah. Well, first of all, there was no narrative, definitely not in these other orgs. But then also, you know, just the... So, you know, there was the fleet aspect back in that in those days, right, in yep. Skunk Works. And, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit different now because it's evolved, but you know, still, there's still that kind of sense of, you know, hey, we're all here to do this big teamwork kind of thing, right? It's, it's, not, it's not just a loose confederation of people who happen to be online at the same time. Like there's an actual, I feel like there's a kind of drive in the org towards this, you know, large group coordinated action kind of thing. And that's what I really enjoy. Nice. That's fantastic. Yeah, they are really fun. So I got locked in on one of the big ones, too, when I first came in. I think it was the Battle of Yella was my first big one. That was the 25 versus 25. We had Hammerhead, Carrick, Viter Wings, Ground Forces. It was incredible, right? And, like, sure, we hit bugs and Star Citizen, and we're all get frustrated by it, but we all, you know, overcame them, and we all still had a really great time, and that's another thing I definitely love about the Skunks. So. With your own persona, though, so you see your skunks, you've tell, told everyone what you like about it, same thing that we do. There's a narrative that binds us together. It helps us with our collaboration, helps us try different things. That's one of the things I love about us, too. I, I think we were one of the few groups out there that I'm aware of. Now, obviously, there's probably some that do it as well, that really focus on that combined arms where we put fleet and fighter and, you know, 
ground forces all together and we're trying to do this outside of things you know outside of just jump down so we're good at it right like that got us on the board and we did really well so what is your persona in the verse like so who is rumline within the verse and you know kind of where do you see yourself going within the skunks and within star citizen how do you want to grow your so own I, narrative I, sorry go ahead yeah i i I must confess, I'm not the biggest uh, role player. You know, I've I've seen you know some of your other material, and I think it's really awesome people that build, you know, full backstories for their characters and that kind of thing. And um, this is, you know, I, I never did like D and D or or that kind of thing. So this is my first kind of venue where I've been exposed to folks like that. And I think it's really cool. I just haven't put a lot of thought into that for myself. Um, but what what I want to do, you know, with the org and you know in Star Citizen, is you know kind of along the lines like I said. A minute ago was you know the large combined arms coordinated action massively multiplayer groups working together to achieve some sort of goal that's the kind of gameplay that i find really engaging that's what i want to help develop that talent internally and uh you know encourage encourage others to you know if if they find that fun to come join us and pitch in as well love it love it so we do do a lot of events inside of the org, and this is a great time to ask you, what are like, you know, your top two or top three favorite events that you've been part of um, or just in general that the org has hosted that you may not have even gotten to partake in, but you got to hear about it or watch the story from it after, et cetera. What are, what are your top two, let's say? Uh, I mean, my first one was, my first exposure to that was, I think it was the Eager Flats battle um, where we had the... Nice. There was oh, the wow. the ground forces and the you know we got the redeemers and I can't remember what other assets were in the air. There was two teams you know fight, facing off over uh, eager flats and uh, pack rat did that really nice uh, you know reporter you know role play going on there that was super cool. Um, that just really yeah. opened my eyes like oh my gosh this is like I, I you know I'd, I'd done some PvP before that but you know not really it was and. I don't want to get too much into that PVP versus griefer debate, but yeah, you know, it was kind of like I am happy to touch all... base on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. It was you know my experience was always pretty much more in the griefer aspect, it was like, haha, you suck, get good, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And this was like a totally supportive, like, hey, we're all here to learn. We're all we all want to get better. Let's do these events to test ourselves and come up with some lessons learned and that kind of thing. And that just blew me away. And it was so much fun. I was like, dude, I I so made the right choice picking this org. Um, and then after that, there was the, it was one of the Hurston videos where there was like all the tanks and ballistas and stuff on the ground. There was a couple of fighters in the air. Um, that was super awesome getting to, yeah, that was a good one. uh, shoot, uh, shoot tanks with a, with a ballista. Um, yeah, I didn't even know that you could do that, you know, target ground vehicles or whatever. And, um, I didn't either on that it, one. You know, I was in on that one too. It was super fun. Yeah. And, you know, win or lose, it didn't matter. I think Eager Flux was was my first big event, and and totally, you know, I mean that totally blew me away. I, I, I think Bergen was the squad lead for that, uh, and I pretty much followed him around like a lost puppy ever, uh, puppy ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that no, was that, that, that event right there was. Uh, I mean, that was one of my defining moments in this game, and, and coming into it as an actual game that I was going to play seriously was. When we were all gathered up at the OM, we all had the the target, you know, marked, and we all hit warp and dropped out over the target at the same time. And it's like, all right, let's find the targets and get on it. I was just like, ah, that's what I'm here for. I have to say, getting um, my ass handed to me uh, repetitively by Echo was possibly the uh, biggest driving force I've had uh, in, in sort of, you know, p pursuing what I've, I've grown to love in this game, which is was sort of fighter combat. So, I mean, yeah, it was that was an exceptional event. I, I hope that we can at some point repeat it because uh, it was it was great, especially having that sort of mix of, of ground going on with the air stuff in overhead uh, as a cinematic experience. You know, it, it felt like something out of a movie. That was that was incredible stuff. Yeah, and I think that that kind of was the catalyst that drove the creation of the task forces in the first place, was it not? Absolutely, it was, and it was also to give us an uh, an op, like a way to organize together um, 
provide additional structure and more upward mobility because you don't have to be part of a task force on the skunks right there's no requirement to do that it's all self-driven i really do enjoy that some of this representation representational of the time zone that you're in so you might join one over another because there'll be more people but they're pretty spread out um and then the task force where yeah to be able to give us this ability to say hey we have some people that are really really collaborative and spending a lot of time in it let's do some like you know more structured events against each other uh, and then maybe also try to structure them so that we don't have to have any one person like organizing everything all the time and the task force commanders can self-organize and that's kind of starting to happen now, right? We just recently launched what we call Skunkopoly, which Durgan is the creator and inventor of. Um, I had some influence on it, but he took it and ran with it and made it into this really, really simple but very interesting way to run a strategic layer. So you as commander of Task Force Delta, right? You have that leadership position. You engage in the first rounds of combat with us, provided us like insanely good feedback, right? I think Durgan will probably have some points on that to, to talk about. We're making changes to the process to improve it, and we're going to restart the thing and get it re-engaged again. Um, but we would love to know what that experience is like for you, leading your team into that type of challenge, right? Against another task force inside of it. And one of the things like, I'm hoping and we hope to see is that continuation of that collaborative environment where you can learn it like viral talked about same thing for me i got my ass kicked by echo a bunch of times but we're in a collaborative environment where you can really learn what you were doing wrong and improve so give us a rundown of your engagement and any of your team kind of calling this section mentioned in dispatches that you would like to highlight right the exceptional players whether it was in that engagement or even just in the day-to-day -day grind of running a task force all but your for the first okay. time, uh, oh. for first time listeners, before we do jump into that, oh, um, there may be worth people that uh, could possibly listen to this who don't know what Skunkopoly is. So it may be worth us yes. just, I, I don't know if maybe 100%. you can do a brief summary on that, Durgan, just a, a sort of vague outline of, of what Skunkopoly is as a concept uh, before we dive into that. Sure. So uh, on a simple level, Skunkopoly is basically a uh, imaginary board game. We take the three moons that are around Crusader, which is uh, Selen, Daymar, and Yella, and we take all of the major uh, warpable location points on the ground there, other than the, um, the newer bunkers, and we use those as sort of uh, positions on a board. We, uh, we have maps of each moon where those positions are marked and connected by arbitrary lines that you would have to follow if you wanted to say you have one of those positions taken over you're going to attack another one you follow the line to do it there and you have different lines going in different directions to all these different territories each territory on that map is also worth a certain number of points so you go through a round of the game at the beginning of the round which we're looking at making about two weeks in length now to give everyone time to schedule um essentially all the territories that uh, each task force, which operates as a team on the board, controls, they can move from those to attack other territories and take them over. Uh, if they happen to attack the same territory as another task force, or they straight up attack another task force's territory, that triggers a battle between those two teams. And those two teams have to talk to each other, find a time that works for both of them uh, over the next couple of weeks, and then actually go there with a set number of ships and personnel and conduct a battle over that location. And then the winner of that location takes that marked uh, spot on the map. And at the end of the week, or not the week, but the round rather, it's going to be two weeks now, um, basically every task force has its positions on the map tallied up and added to their score. So it's a, a set campaign. We're looking at maybe six rounds to 12 rounds. Not entirely sure how long this next campaign is going to run now that we're going to be resetting it. But... From there, it's, it'll run for that set amount, and the winner at the end of it will be whoever has the most points. And there's some other uh, strategic aspects to it, too, such as the fact that you can use the points that you've gained on your score to get a small temporary advantage in some of these battles. Um, so it can kind of come down to, you know, you're going to be fighting an enemy that you know is particularly tough. It's really important to you to win that territory. Do you want to wager your points against it, which are it's going to determine whether you ultimately win the thing or not? the whole game or do you want to go in there without spending anything and try and save them and get your score as high as possible there are little decisions like that that the task force commanders and their close seconds and thirds have to kind of put their heads together and make decisions on 
But basically, it's to take the frame to put a framework on top of this otherwise excellent flying and ground shooting game, and give it a larger purpose. Give it a, a strategic layer and a, a territory control layer, and uh, kind of give us something something larger to do than just get together for battles and give it some some long term life. It gives it some training for the leadership too of a task force, right? And creates a little bit of stickiness is the idea too that helps people engage. And I, I love like some of the feedback that we got, right? Was that the the scheduling of once a week is kind of actually hard on people. And so we're toning it down a bit and recognizing that we have all have lives, et cetera, and stuff. So we've laid that down rum line. You did the first two battles with uh, Task Force Charlie. Give us a rundown, a little quick after action report. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I will say leading up to it, it was, it was very overwhelming. <laughs> We, uh, <laughs> I would say Task Force Delta was probably, I'm not super familiar with all the different task forces, we have so many, but uh, I would say that Task Force Delta was probably one of the least PvP centric uh, groups. And uh, it's kind of, you know, some history in there that, you know, I won't bore you with, but essentially mm -hmm. it was like, oh crap, we got to get this figured out like now. And okay, you do that, you do that, let's figure out that, you know, we were, you know, planning all these little trainings to do and, um, you know, can we even get the requisite number of people for our battles. Um, one of the aspects that I really enjoy about Skunkopoly, the, in addition to the, you know, the strategic and the different locations, that kind of thing, is that each location has its own battle conditions. So you say, okay, at um, Shubin Mining, whatever, you can have such and such vehicles or whatever it was, right? Uh, the two battles that we did this past week, um, one was a two hammerheads, and then I mean, each, each uh, side got two hammerheads, uh, four light fighters and two gladiator bombers. And then the other one was two Connies, a redeemer, and then the same uh, or light fighters and two gladiator bombers. Oh, so you got and the light so, battles. You know, the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tw both were 20 versus 20. Okay, um, those are heavy. And yeah, it was it was a lot to, you know, coordinate and get all that going. Um, but it was so much fun. We, we learned more nice. in those two battles than we did probably in a month of training twice a week, you know what I mean? Um, so it was it was very, very useful, very fun. Um, yeah, I can't, can't wait to do it again. I, so as far as how the battle went, um, you know, so we, we were facing Task Force Charlie, who, you know, in my estimation, are much better at PvP than we are. Uh, we had a slight numbers advantage, uh, but in the first battle, you know, with the hammerheads, you know, we, we both, I thought was really interesting um, you know, Durgan Task Force Bravo, you guys are all about, you know, finding that meta and this kind of thing. And we had to have our own kind of little, little research wing to determine, okay, well, what what is the best loadout? You know, we were testing all kinds of things and, okay, we found out that the C788, you know, those take down hammerheads super fast. Well, guess what? Task Force Charlie came to the same conclusion. And I think our hammerheads, well, you know, whoever whoever's hammerhead died last, you know, was going to have the advantage, right? Um, yep. but I, I think three of the four hammerheads died within a minute of each other. Wow. And maybe within two minutes of starting the battle. It was because, you know, you destroy the components and they just yeah. literally fall out of the sky. Yeah. And so we're, we're sitting there upside down on the, on the ground at, at yellow, <laughs> you know, <laughs> looking around in our turret. Oh, oh, I, I think, oh, I see them going around. Oh, they, oh, oh, they got one of us. So oh, we got one of them, you know, that kind of thing. It was kind of fun just watching it from the ground. Become uh, the spectator <laughs> wing. Yeah, <laughs> we couldn't do anything. The ship was fully, you know, all the components were fully destroyed. Um, but you know, that's that's just the way that the that the game is right now. The the hammerhead is kind of kind of broken in that regard because they have physicalized components but no armor. So mm -hmm. you know, it's easy to you know you get some splash damage in there and bye bye power plant. Um, you know that kind of thing. So you know, it was, it was really interesting that we both came to the, you know both teams came to the same conclusion as to how to fight the battle. Um, makes me think we're you know doing something right. And then um, in the second battle, um, you know, this is, you know, we're still in 3.16.1 and refueling has not come in yet. The rebalancing of fuel tanks is still yet to come. But it was it was the first time I've seen an instance in Star Citizen anyway of fighters running out of fuel. And we had a number of fighters, you know, again, they fell, falling out of the sky, not because they got distorted, but because they run out of gas. Wow. And it's like, oh, maybe maybe hitting that boost wasn't so good, you know, I don't know. <laughs> right. 
This is amazing. Like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is one of the coolest things to to me to see from from watching other people actually play the games that played out is and, and it goes to show that this thing is a learning experience for everybody. That was something I had absolutely not taken into consideration on any level when I was designing the the battlefield conditions. And I love that you guys ran into that and it became something like, hey, we need to think about this. Because now that y'all yeah. have done that, everyone has to do it. Yeah, and I mean, it Everyone was a legit knows. strategy. Like, you know, when we got towards the end, it's like, okay, now we're in War of Attrition mode where any, you know, the fighters are going to start, you know, just dropping like flies. And, you know, we we're down <laughs> to, I think we had we had two fighters left and they had one fighter left, but we still had a Redeemer. And the Redeemer, you know, had, a, you know, much, it didn't have a ton of fuel left, but it still had a quarter tank. So as long as it didn't die, um, you know, that was our <laughs> run out the clock until the other person crashed, and then that's how we won. But uh, it was really good battle, very, um, very good uh, work by both teams to, you know, work together, you know, take out the other side's ships, and uh, it was a, it was a joy to watch, honestly. I'm uh, I'm because glad to hear that both Delta and and Charlie ended up with the C seven eight build, and I know that we. Bravo, obviously we we both kind of got a motivation and, and a reputation for um trying to theory craft what is the optimal way to approach stuff. And I think we'd pretty much come to the same conclusion uh for when we had okay. a hammerhead battle that we were going to basically do the same thing. Uh which was gonna be heavy use of the C seven eighty eight to negate uh the fighter wings and also um destroy components on ships so i'm i'm really glad that you guys came to the same conclusion on that uh the fuel yeah. thing yeah I, I mean i hadn't even thought about that but it's it's interesting that essentially you've got this finite resource that you're gonna have to manage and um it's definitely something we're gonna have to think about when going forwards and that's that's going to be something that may even dictate the pace and the positioning and the tactics of the fight I like the fact that it's going to punish people for just flying around, kiting and running um, because, you know, th these are meant to be battles and, you know, they're meant to be fought around a certain area. And I, I kind of like the idea that, you know, if you, if you don't focus on what you're supposed to be doing and you mill around and waste time, you're really working against yourself. Yeah, I absolutely. like too that it's giving. So Rumlin, you brought up a bunch of great points. One, it brought your team together and started you guys getting like a, it sounds like it brought it brought you together as more of a team just engaging in, in the process of getting ready for it and two that you now have some information that the rest of the the verse doesn't particularly have per se because you went out and hashtag did the work right hashtag put the time in and you learn like stuff that if you're not engaging in this like the ballistas right shooting tanks and stuff like that or how long the flight time of your fighters are versus your bigger ships and when that matters to tell them yo go back and get refueled now i need you guys rotating out rotate 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 when we come to jump town later and stuff like that. So that was really neat is so going back to this though, is there any uh, specific people that you would like to have mentioned in the dispatches on your team? Um, we, honestly, there's so many and <laughs> I don't want to leave anybody out. We really have a great, a great Done. crew on task force Delta. And I'm so, so proud to work with all of them. Um, it's all of them. Then I'd say you can mention all of yeah, them. <laughs> yeah. All of them. Um, I'd say Lu Luker, um, he's a founding member of the Skunk Works Spreadsheet Corps, Ubra, and my EXO. Um, couldn't do it without him. Uh, Barney really stepped up in this battle. He did not want to have any any sort of leadership role. Like, I'm just here to play the game, man. Just don't bother me. And you know, he stepped he stepped into the breach as our Raptor captain and did a fantastic job organizing the fighter and bomber wings. Um, I'd say uh, mail me not. He was a great. He we were. We only had maybe 12 active members when Skunkopoly kicked off. And we're like, we're going to get our ass handed to us unless we get, you know, some sort of, you know, minimum number of folks, right? And he stepped up to the plate and made it happen and, you know, reached out and was, you know, in voice chats trying to drum up uh, Task Force Delta and got got people in. So we, we actually had a chance of winning. So um, amazing. That is so cool. Yeah, so many people all all pulling together and it was really a joy to be part of 
I love hearing that, man. Like I, I, I just love it because it's that team building, and then the, you get that engagement, and you know the story of Barney. It sounds very interesting too. I've played with him; he's a fantastic guy. I love playing with him too. Uh, and Barney. nice to hear that you know he stepped up in the moment because you needed to, and that may not like and I, that's where you know those great epic stories come from. That's super cool. So um, I think maybe we'll get wrapping up unless anyone else has some topics they would like to bring up right now. Rumline, is there any specific topics you'd like to jump into? PvP is always on the table if you want to talk about it a bit too. PvP uh, versus griefing debate. I mean, do we want to touch oh on it? No. It's, it's a hot button topic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's kind of interesting. I think we already got the name for the podcast episode is Confessions of a Former Griefer, as was revealed in this uh, podcast for the first time that Rumline came from that that school and that camp. And that was transitioned to more of a narrative player. I do like that. That's kind of neat. Yeah. And, you know, I think it was really interesting. There was a, there was an internal debate, I don't know, maybe a month ago in, at the org level. And then we had a similar debate, you know, within the task force about oh, what what is really the line like wh where where do you draw the line between acceptable what's acceptable behavior for the skunks and what's you know what's not acceptable behavior and the i really like the tone that Katie struck and um you know it was basically you know we're not the good guys we're not the white knights we're not the but we're not the bad guys either yeah and you know we kind of do we do our own thing and it's really cool cuz it um, it gives us the freedom to pursue the interesting gameplay and interesting opportunities as they come up and craft our own ideology as an org rather than following something that's pre-built like, you know, quote unquote, lawful versus unlawful. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. I agree with you on that. And the skunks, we're here to nail Hurston's ass to the wall, right? So you get in the way of that, we'll, 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 we'll just run over you. Help us, yeah. and we're total friends, right? <laughs> Our focus is Hurston and taking down those shit bags. Okay, amazing rum line. Final thoughts from Durgan and Viral. You guys got anything you want to add there? Of uh, just, uh, I'm I'm over the moon that you guys had fun with that. Especially, like you said, if if your task force didn't have much of a PvP focus or an interest in it before, I uh, I'm really glad to hear that everybody came through and enjoyed it and kind of discovered some things about themselves and about the game in the process. And that's really. That's what I'm shooting for here, because you know, the, the times are times are easy in this game right now. One day they're not going to be so much. And I keep yeah. I, I hate to keep banging on the you know harbinger of doom drum, but you know there's going to co come a time in this game where we have to fight tooth and nail for everything that we have against other people that are organized, that are skilled, um, and that really have a passion for playing the game like we do. And you know, right now we can start training that not just in a gameplay. Uh, form but as a team and start building those teams those relationships that hey we've been together somewhere now and you know we can we can handle whatever comes at us later i think it's yeah. it's uh excellent that we can have pvp in uh an organized structure normal story esque environment because i think uh pvp um inherently can get a bad name uh without any context and and having a context to it where it is it is a friendly competition does allow people to sort of go okay well maybe i can re imagine and, and reconsider any preconceptions i have about the idea of shooting another player because obviously you, you we we do have a lot of people that aren't specifically pvp focused um but that doesn't mean that pvp in itself is not uh it is not fun and you know it it isn't all just shooting mustangs outside of grim hex it is um in in the wider picture can can be used as a interesting tool uh to improve yourself as a player but also to create you know exciting unique storylines and engagements uh when when you have that organization uh and that org that organized structure i think that's what i'm trying to say an organized structure to it um it's 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 not all jump town and, and griefing exactly i right. like that aspect of it too the team focus is what i really like and having context is where i enjoy engaging in pvp i don't do too much random pvp per se but when i'm in the mood for it you know i'll go shoot a turret i'll go red and i'll go sit someplace in the battlefield of my choosing that i want to practice in and then i'll wait till people come to me right i think most of us do that type of engagement we'll play red 
but we're not pirates per se and stuff like that. Although we may engage in some of that so that we get a good solid understanding of how to counter it and maybe how to get ahead of it for our own, the, the sake of our own org and stuff. This, once again, I really find the skunks are amazing innovators. And I think in the discussion, we saw a lot of innovative ideas, um, people pushing themselves past it, right? And really coming together and being more than just individuals and forming this larger team and organization that's been for me amazing because generally i don't join big organizations and get involved like this and the skunks have just pulled me right in and it's you know i gotta give it to katie i'm a huge fan of hers i know we all are and we've had ups and downs as an org because a lot of people a lot of you know things to do and try to manage in our own lives and everything but underneath it all is this willingness and understanding and I'm just going to come out and say, you know, a general love of the game and each other that has brought us together. And we have this amazing history already in this short little time period. Like the fact that Task Force Bravo has a little bit of a rep, right? That's super cool. I love that. It's, it's, like there's a narrative within a narrative within a narrative. So, Rumlug, thank you for adding to the storyline. Thank all your people for adding to the story, like Jurgen, Viral. Thank you for being part of it and helping us have the opportunity to build these storylines that we get to live in and our characters in the verse get to live in. I think it was amazing, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. All right. Thanks. Well, we'll wrap it up here then. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rumline. You were amazing. Yeah, thank you. This was a lot of fun. And yeah, appreciate appreciate the opportunity. That was brilliant. Thank you very much for coming. Alrighty. And three, Thanks, two, guys. one. Good.